Good morning, good morning. We'd like to welcome you here to Presence of the Lord Christian Church in Riverside, California. I'm Pastor David Martinez, and for everyone who's here in the house, and all of you who are watching on either Facebook or YouTube, we welcome you in Jesus' name. Amen? God is good this morning. You know what? God was good yesterday morning, and God will be good tomorrow morning, whether we get one or not. God is good. And, you know, we worship him and we praise him for who he is. He's on the throne. No one can knock him off. And we're going to celebrate that this morning. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, and we praise you. We give you all glory and honor for who you are and all that you've done in our lives, Lord. Father, this morning as we come together in your name, Lord God, we, I say we will, but I pray, Lord God, that you would help us to not take this opportunity lightly, Lord God, to understand and to recognize that we are coming into your presence. We are running into your presence only because you have allowed us to, only because you have, you have created an opportunity and a, and a place for us to, to do so. Now, Lord God, it's up to us to create that environment, Lord, to create that time, Lord God. So, Father, I just pray that you would help us move everything to the side. It doesn't matter what it is. Our biggest failures, our biggest victories, Lord God, help us move everything to the side because all of them pale in comparison to you, Lord God. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You ready to worship the Lord? Yes. Amen, amen. Pastor Steve. Thank you, Pastor David. Thank you for being here today. It is always good to see people in church after the time has changed. Some may be coming in an hour later, <clears throat> wondering why they started without them, right? Other times they're here an hour early. <laughs> but the Lord will meet us. Where two or three are gathered in his name, he said he would be here in our midst. So let's praise him this morning. Wonderful, so wonderful is your unfailing love. Your cross has spoken mercy over me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. No heart can fully know how glorious, how beautiful you are. Beautiful one, I love you. Beautiful one, I adore. Beautiful one, my soul must sing. Wonderful, wonderful, so wonderful. Is your unfailing love Your cross has spoken mercy over me No eye has seen, no ear has heard No heart could fully know How glorious, how beautiful you are Beautiful one, I love you Beautiful one I adore, beautiful one, my soul must sing. Beautiful one, I love you, beautiful one, I adore, beautiful one, my soul must sing. Powerful, powerful, so powerful, your glory fills the sky. Your mighty works displayed for all to see. The beauty of your majesty awakes my heart to sing. How marvelous, how wonderful you are. Beautiful one, I love you. Beautiful one, I adore. Beautiful one, my soul. one I adore, beautiful one, my soul must sing. You are 
opened my eyes to your wonders in you. You captured my heart with this love. There's nothing on earth that's as beautiful as you. You opened my eyes to your wonders in you. You captured my heart with this love. There's nothing on earth that's as beautiful as you. Beautiful one. Beautiful one, I adore. Beautiful one, my soul must sing. Beautiful one, I love you. Beautiful one, I adore. Beautiful one, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. Beautiful one. My soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. Beautiful one. We praise you today, Lord. Hallelujah. forgiven because you were forsaken I'm accepted you were condemned and I'm alive and well your spirit is within me because you died and rose again I'm forgiven because you were forsaken I'm accepted you were condemned I am alive and well your spirit is within me because you died and rose again amazing love That you, my King, would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. I'm forgiven. Because you were forsaken, I'm accepted, you were condemned, and I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose again, amazing love, how can it be? That you, my King, would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you.
that you my king would die for me amazing love I know it's true it's my joy to honor you in all Dwelling place forever 
Take me to the place where you are I just want to be with you I want to be where you Surrounded by your glory In your presence That's where I always want to be I just want to be I just want to be with you I just want to be To be where you are, dwelling daily in your presence. I don't want to worship from afar. Draw me near to where you are. I just want to be where you are, in your dwelling place. Forever, take me to the place where you are. I just want to be with you. I want to be where you are, dwelling in your presence, feasting at your table, surrounded by your glory. That's where I always want to be I just want to be I just want to be with you I just want to be I just want to be with you I want to be where you Surrounded by your glory In your presence That's where I always want to be I just want to be I just want to be with you I just want to be Your prayer. 
Good morning, everyone. Oh, you all look so bright and chipper and wide awake. Praise the Lord for that, huh? Before I bring the word today, I want to share a song. And uh, this is the season when we just totally focus in on what the Lord has done for us. And um, this is a, a beautiful song that um, I've sung over the years. Just want to share it with you today. Thank you, Lord. It must have seemed a hard way It must have seemed a long road From heaven to earth From glory to a humble birth What a price you had to pay To give your gift away And send your only son to the world to carry my cross my shame my sin my pain to give his life his blood his It must have seemed a hard way It must have seemed a long road From the garden of Gethsemane To a hill called Calvary What a dark and weary road What a cruel and heavy load A mountain of guilt and misery you carried my cross my shame my sin my pain you gave your life your blood your What a beautiful song that is, amen.
I want to begin this morning in the book of Hosea. And we just sang this song on our side, which is taken from this portion of scripture. But this scripture is so powerful. To those who have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. Hosea 6 1. Come and let us return to the Lord. For he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live in his sight. Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and former rain to the earth. This portion of scripture is so powerful because, of course, it's, it's a prophecy about Jesus, about his death, about him being buried in the tomb for a few days. But verse 2, and this is what I want you to understand today, how beautiful this is. We know Jesus' story. We know the gospel. We know that he rose again from the dead. But here in this prophecy, in verse 2, after two days, he will revive who? He will revive who? Us. On the third day, he will raise us up. You see, we were included in that work, that glorious work of his death and resurrection. It was for us. And he died our death. He paid the penalty for our sins. And now you and I will never know death. We will leave this world one day, but it will be to go straight home to a place that he's prepared for each one of us who have called upon his name. And along with that, he took the fear of death. How many of you were ever afraid of dying? Oh, my gosh, I didn't even want to think about it. I didn't want to talk about it. And the Bible says that, that the devil enslaved us and had us captive, and he used the fear of death. And a lot of people uh, drink and do drugs. A lot of people party all the time. A lot of people do all they can to avoid the thought of their own death. But now, the Lord has destroyed death. And when we think of leaving this world, it is to go on to a glorious destiny in his presence forever and ever with a bunch of people who are waiting for us. Amen? And so that's what the Lord did. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live in his sight. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. My goodness, what kind of deal is that? Give me your sins, and I'll give you eternal life. Confess your sins. And I will cleanse you of those sins and all that unrighteousness. And I will make you the righteousness of God. That's a glorious thing. For the wages of sin is death. And that can sure seem like a scary scripture because all of us are tempted to sin constantly. Am I the only one? I mean, we fail the Lord so much. But again, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to Forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. 
But ask yourself a question. How long would you remain a Christian if you gave in to every single temptation that comes against you? Let me ask you another way. Maybe one that we can relate to. How long would you fit into what you're wearing today if you ate everything you wanted to eat as often as you want to eat it? Let's not go there. But that's a picture of temptation. And if we gave in to everything that comes into our mind, by the way, temptation doesn't begin with you. You're not, you're not bad. What the Lord has cleansed, let no man call unclean. You're not bad. Temptation comes at you from outside. I've never seen a mouse setting a mouse trap. Never. We have some mice right now. I mean, I was in my studio the other day, and there he was just looking at me. And I thought, wow, he's pretty cute, but I'm going to kill him. I have to kill him. They are cute. Little mice are cute, but not in my house. And so I never have seen a mouse setting a mouse trap, putting cheese in it. Uh, and, and neither are you tempted because you're evil. Temptation comes at you from outside. But how does he know? How does he know? He just watches you. He just watches and, and looks at your eyes and sees what you're looking at. Ooh, he's lingering a little long right there. I can use that. I can use that. All he has to do is watch us, and he knows how to set the trap, and he uses the bait, custom bait. And so the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. And so again, I have good news for you today. Temptation is not a sin. Being tempted is not a sin, and you're not the one tempting yourself. And God is not the one tempting you. God allows us to be tested from time to time, but just to show you, just to reveal to you what's in your heart. But generally, temptation is a work of the enemy because he wants you to fall and he wants you to die. Turn with me to James chapter 1, verse 13. I want to show you this from the word so that you understand because, man, we can feel so miserable and unworthy and unclean sometimes because it's constantly on us. Temptation is constantly there. It just won't let up sometimes. But James 1.13 says, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt, nor does he himself tempt anyone. Wouldn't that be a cruel God to be tempting his children so they can fall and he can sentence them to eternal misery? God is not tempting you. But like I said, he will use temptation to reveal your heart to you. Verse 14 says, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. When desire has conceived, when you give in to the temptation, that's when it gives birth to sin. And when it is full grown, sin brings forth what? Death. That's why the enemy brings temptation. But more good news is found in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And just listen to this. No temptation has overtaken you such as is common to man. But God is faithful, 
who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. The problem is we wrestle with a sin nature, don't we? We don't always want to escape. Sometimes we go looking for sin. But the Lord will always make a way for you to escape that temptation. And Hebrews 2.18 says, For in that he, Jesus himself, has suffered being tempted, he is able to help those who are tempted. I love the fact that Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, the Bible says that he resisted temptations. And that in that moment in Gethsemane, he was resisting all of our temptations. They all came upon him at the same time. And he resisted. And the Bible says that he sweat great drops of blood in the course of resisting those temptations. But he won. He overcame those temptations. And his victory is our victory. And so, in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. I was talking with Angie today, and I was sharing with her a scripture that I love in Psalm 103, and I actually put it in, because he loved me. As a father pities his children, has compassion on his children. As a father pities his children, the Lord pities those who fear him, for he knows our frame. He knows that we are dust. And one day, I was just meditating on that, and the Lord spoke something to my heart. He said, I did not only remember that you were dust, I remember that I was dust too. I came and allowed myself to be formed of the same dust you are. So I would know what every temptation feels like. But I overcame it all for you. And his victory is our victory. That's our hope. That's our faith. Let's turn together to Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. And we're going to look at the temptation of Jesus for a moment. Right at the end of Matthew 3, Jesus has just been baptized. And as he comes up out of the water, John the Baptist sees the Holy Spirit coming down in the form of a dove. And it lands on Jesus and remains with him. It's a vision that he saw. And the Lord had told John, upon whom you see the Holy Spirit descending... And remaining on him, that is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Now, here in Matthew 4, 1, after being baptized with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now, I go a day, half a day, sausage McMuffin to lunchtime is an eternity. Here, Jesus has fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, no food, and the Bible says he was hungry. And the devil sees an opportunity, hmm. And he tells Jesus, in verse 3, Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, and was he the Son of God? Okay. If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. Do you sense the magnitude of that temptation? Not having eaten for 40 days and 40 nights? But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone 
but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. One of the things the Lord did for me when he came into my life is he took away alcohol. I'd been bound to alcohol for many years, and I was just extremely lost in alcoholism. And I have heard other people, this never happened to me by the grace of God, but I have heard other people share who had been delivered from alcohol as well that the devil told them, if you're really a Christian, go sit in that bar and just have a Coke. I've heard heroin addicts say who were delivered that they heard a voice, hey, go to the Connections house and don't buy anything. That's tempting the Lord. Why do that? It's not the Lord telling you to do those things. And you don't have to prove anything to anyone except him. And don't give up your freedom, your deliverance. I remember a beautiful testimony it just always blesses me. A, a, a pastor, I, I think this was at a victory outreach somewhere. And the pastor was preaching, and he had been uh, he had been a heroin addict, and he was ministering to a bunch of men who had come out of that lifestyle. And that day he was preaching on Jesus turning the water into wine at the wedding of Cana. And one of the guys who just had gotten to the home said, yeah, you really believe this? Do you really believe that, that Jesus turned water into wine? And the man sitting next to him who had known the Lord for a while said, well, you don't know. You, you know what? I don't, I don't know if Jesus turned the water into wine, but uh, he turned heroin into a refrigerator for my wife and beer into milk for my kids. And I think that guy went on to serve the Lord with all his heart. But you know what? You don't have to prove anything to anyone. The Lord says, you shall receive power when that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. You'll just be witnesses. People will see your life and it will be different because the Lord has done a work in your life. Verse 8, again, again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. In another account of the temptation of Jesus found in Luke, that one ends with, with this scripture saying, Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. The devil will come at you over and over and over again. And you just have to be very aware of what your weaknesses are, of when he can get to you. He can get to you when things are going bad. And he can get to you when things are going really good. He'll just try over and over 
but it is the word of God, the written word of God that will give you victory over temptation. Psalm 119 verse 9 says, How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. You need to know who God is and what his word says. And that is a lifelong process. But once you know him, you know when the voice in your mind, in your heart, is him and when it isn't. Amen? You, you, you come to know those things. Hebrews 4.14 says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. He defeated those temptations. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And church, I'm going to say it very clearly. The reason we meet every service is to build him that throne. And that throne becomes the throne of grace when he is seated on it and you will receive everything you need, whether it's healing, whether it's provision, whether it's deliverance, whether it's help, whether it's forgiveness, whatever you need. And a good thing is that our Heavenly Father knows what you have need of, even before you ask. But be faithful to build him that throne always. Because our human nature is, is like Adam. What did Adam do when he sinned? He hid. Now, what was he hiding from? He was hiding from the Lord. And the, Bible, the way the Bible says it is that he was hiding from the presence of the Lord. Because the Lord was in the garden. When you and I sin, we also run from the presence of the Lord. I have said this many times. When we're involved in unrepented sin... The presence of the Lord is the most miserable place to be. Because the Holy Spirit convicts. How many of you love conviction? You know what? Let me just say this very quickly so that you understand. We sin. And fail the Lord. The devil comes and he comes with condemnation. You're going to hell. What kind of Christian are you? You're not a Christian at all. Just go to hell. And he tells you to just lay down and die. It's over. You sin. You fail the Lord, and the Holy Spirit comes with conviction. That conviction, which is true, says you're guilty. You're guilty. You know it, and I know it. But the Holy Spirit says, go to Jesus. Make it right. And conviction and condemnation feel a lot alike. Because the same sin brings them both on. But learn to run to the throne of grace. To obtain your forgiveness. And you know what? If you need forgiveness from the throne of grace, why don't you come build it? You need to build that throne. He is enthroned on the praises of his people. And do your part to always build that throne so that we'll have everything that we need. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2, 7, Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. Is Jesus precious to you? But to those who are disobedient... 
The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they were also appointed. And again, if you're making a choice to live in sin, the last person you want to run into is Jesus. The last person you want looking you in the eye is Jesus. But if you are ready to confess your sin, the only one you can look to is Jesus. And so we need to maintain this lifestyle of coming to him constantly. Why? Because <laughs> we mess up constantly. And it becomes a way of life. Just as fast as we try to run away from the presence of the Lord when we sin, we need to run with the same speed to the throne of grace so that we can obtain mercy and find grace.